Assalamu alaikum everyone, this is Dr. Abdul Rafi here again back with the remaining coverage of the chapter Gypsum Products for the Dental Cost from the book uh, Applied Dental Materials uh, I hope you guys understand it well in the last uh, video what I was trying to teach you guys uh, if you have not watched the video uh, watched it and then come back here for the remaining coverage of the further topics uh, so and uh, today we will discuss about the uh, setting characteristics and manipulation of uh, the gypsum uh, the, these both are the very important characteristics of the product to be acknowledged about starting from the manipulation first of all I will tell how do we mix gypsum it's simple that uh, we take the powder of dental plaster or dental stone then we mix it with water and then we get the workable mix as I told earlier that uh, uh, as soon as we get the workable mix uh, we can use it uh, in uh, for uh, pouring it into the impression and make uh, models uh, or dyes one important thing I would like to include here uh, that uh, what type of motion should we do to get a proper workable mix uh, we, the motion should be circular steering motion to get a good workable uh, mix uh, now the instruments requires for mixing there are two instruments required uh, for the mixing of uh, gypsum uh, number one is plastic of a uh, plastic or rubber bowl uh, it should be of 130 millimeter of top diameter it is not important to recognize it or to re to memorize it uh, for the uh, examination point of view but it is important to know about the instruments uh, of your proper category now the second one is a spatula with the round edge blades uh, its width, width should be 20 to 25 millimeter and it should be of 100 millimeter length i will show you the pictures of these two now the mixing time of the gypsum mixing time is very important to know and it is uh, 60 seconds for mechanical mixing that is equals to one minute mixing time has a very profound effect on the characteristics on the setting characteristics of the gypsum I will tell uh, I will tell later in the videos that uh, how mixing time affects the setting characteristics of your product uh, now the water powder ratio what is water powder ratio firstly it is basically the ratio or I should say the expression of the two quantities water being uh, uh, liquid hair and the powder being uh, solid hair and it is a ratio between the two quantities and now uh, the book has mentioned three types of water powder ratios the theoretical water powder ratio the water powder ratio for dental plaster and the water powder ratio for dental stone now what do we mean by theoretical water powder ratio theoretical water powder ratio means uh, that a ratio at which a chemical reaction is satisfied chemical reaction between the gypsum powder and the water is satisfied and it is 0 0.186 milliliter per gram now uh, I want to tell you that uh, the powder the quantity of powder remains same that is 100 gram that is 100 gram but the quantity of water is variable for theoretical ratio it uh, as uh, we can calculate it from here it should be 18.6 milliliter so now we have a water powder ratio of dental plaster that is 0 0.55 milliliter per gram and we have a water powder ratio of dental stone that is slightly less than the dental plaster that is 0 0.3 milliliter per gram I have a question for you guys I have given you the concept of this in the 
earlier video i want you guys to tell me in the comments or wherever you can tell that why a dental stone has a lesser water power ratio than the dental plaster it's now the setting characteristics before starting this topic i want you all to know that dental materials is 70 percent chemistry 20% physics and 10% biology from my point of view. Uh, firstly, the setting reaction. The setting reaction is exothermic, that is, it involves heat. That is, it involves heat. I want you to know that now the fascinating things start. Now it gets interesting. Uh, basically, chemistry is the study of matter, but I prefer to see it as a study of change. Now, the setting reaction. Uh, is this firstly we have uh, what we have here is calcium sulfate hemihydrate as I said it earlier it uh, mixes uh, we mix it uh, with the water then it uh, is converted into the calcium sulfate dihydrate first stage in the reaction is that water becomes saturated with the hemihydrate that has a solubility of 0.8% I want you guys uh, to uh, memorize uh, this magnitude of uh, solubility. I will tell it later that uh, why I am uh, focusing on it. Uh, then secondly, hemihydrate converts into dihydrate which has a lesser uh, magnitude of solubility. It has 0.2% solubility. Now uh, what are the dihydrate crystals? Uh, crystals of dihydrate are spherulitic in nature and grow from specific sites called nuclei of crystallization. It is frequently asked in BCQs that what uh, shape of crystals uh, do dihydrate have and uh, from which sites uh, it is uh, grown. Now <coughs> look at here. This round structure here is the nuclei of crystallization and nuclei of crystallization can be an impurity or an unconverted dihydrate and these are the growing spherulitic dihydric crystals that is emerging from this nuclei of crystallization in the solution there are so many nuclei of crystallization hair 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 hair, hair everywhere what I believe hypothetically is that when they emerge from the nuclei of crystallization when the dihydrate crystals emerge from the nuclei of crystallization they merge like this then we have a solid structure up till now all the chemical changes were occurring but here the first physical change occurs that uh, the from that from the nuclei of crystallization uh, dihydrate crystals grow look here as I mentioned here as well this is the nuclei of crystallization and these are the spherulated dihydrate crystals. Now what is initial setting? Before telling you that what is initial setting, uh, it is uh, very important to mention that what is setting time. Setting, what is setting time uh, and what is mixing time. Basically the mixing time is the time from the start uh, where we pour power into the water till we get a workable mix and the setting time is from the start of mixing time up till the material is finally set up till the material can no longer be manipulated these both definitions are asked in the OSPs so you guys should note it down <clears throat> now what is initial setting time Initial setting time is the time at which your material becomes a weak solid and it cannot flow readily. It can be manipulated for, for, for some extent at that time. Anhydrate accelerates setting. Why? As uh, I have mentioned it earlier that uh, nuclei of crystallization can be an impurity 
or it can be unconverted dihydrate. The unconverted dihydrate can be hemihydrate or can be anhydrate. Anhydrate accelerates setting because it acts as a nuclei of crystallization. As I told, hemihydrate uh, uh, calcium sulfate hemihydrate has 0.8% solubility and dihydrate has 0.2% solubility. Now I will tell you why I was focusing on the magnitude. As hemihydrate converts into dihydrate the solubility decreases. Why the solubility decreases? Because the crystal the gypsum is taking up the water so the ability of taking up the water is decreasing from anhydrate to hemihydrate then to hemihydrate to dihydrate so we conclude uh, what we conclude is that the anhydrate has the maximum reactivity and the maximum solubility then uh, to some less extent hemihydrate has uh, uh, less solubility than anhydrate and hem and then dihydrate have the lesser solubility than hemihydrate so from anhydrate to dihydrate both the reactivity and the solubility decreases because the ability of taking up water by the product or by the substance is decreasing now look at this graph we have temperature on the y-axis and we have time after mixing at the x-axis as the reaction is exothermic the materials evolves the heat as the time increases now look at initially the temperature is not that high and material is that in is at initial setting but maximum temperature is 30 degrees centigrade which can be reached during the reaction and at the maximum temperature final hardening occurs okay now as the material is at initial setting then the temperatures rapidly increases during the time at which the temperature rapidly increases there is a maximum rate of expansion that uh, as we all know that uh, uh, things uh, or any material expand when it is heated so uh, as the temperature rapidly increases uh, there is a maximum rate of expansion of your material and then it reaches its uh, final hardening point at that time at that point uh, the temperature is 30 degrees centigrade this has one advantage that uh, when uh, our gypsum is used as an investment during the denture making it uh, helps in flasking to soften the wax now what is hygroscopic expansion basically the material undergoes uh, three types of expansion uh, during the setting reaction number one is normal setting expansion expansion number two is a thermal setting expansion as I explained it in the graph and number three the hygroscopic expansion now what is hygroscopic expansion when your material is at initial setting and you immerse it into the water as the crystals at that time is growing so the water takes the spaces between the crystals and helps crystals to grow more so the expansion occurs according to the types uh, uh, there are different uh, values of hygroscopic expansions or different uh, values of expansion of the different types of uh, gypsum this hygroscopic expansion is basically have a advantage when gypsum or phosphate materials are used as investment materials but uh, the silicon as an investment uh, does not uh, go hygroscopic expansion the book uh, explain uh, the uh, expansion values of different types of uh, gypsum of different types of gypsum type 1 and 4 has uh, 0.15 percent expansion type 2 and 5 has uh, 0.30 uh, percent expansion and type 3 has a 0.20 percent 
So these were the manipulation and setting characteristics uh, of the gypsum. I hope you guys understand it and uh, like it as well. Thank you so much. It's so